Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Last week, a lot of you guys seemed particularly interested in AMD's Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.0 technology. So today we're back to provide some additional details on what AMD is cooking up with FSR 2.0. The initial announcement last week was I guess more of a teaser. Today we have many more pieces of information following AMD's presentation at GDC 2022. So as a quick recap from our previous FSR 2.0 video, this is a big leap forward for AMD's upscaling technology, which is lagged behind its main competitor, Nvidia's DLSS, in how it upscales an image. FSR 1.0 used spatial upscaling, which only uses data from the current frame to take a lower render resolution and upscale that to a higher target resolution. FSR 2.0 moves across to using temporal upscaling, the same as DLSS and several other techniques, which gives the algorithm far more data to work with and can produce higher output quality. Temporal upscaling typically combines data from the current frame with data from previous frames and other information such as motion vectors. AMD claimed that FSR 2.0 should provide similar or better than native image quality and optimized anti-aliasing results, all without using AI or machine learning technology. The choice not to use AI significantly broadens the amount of hardware that FSR 2.0 can run on, with AMD saying it should work on their current GPUs as well as GPUs from their competitors. We also went in-depth on a quality comparison looking at FSR 2.0 in screenshots provided by AMD, which do show some promising signs for reconstructing fine detail, although of course with plenty of caveats. So what new information do we have from today's presentation? Well, firstly, let's talk about how FSR 2.0 works, at least in a broad sense. If you want the full nitty gritty details, then AMD's GDC presentation will be available for you to watch soon. But basically, FSR 2.0 works like other temporal upscaling solutions. On the input side, FSR 2.0 requires standard game data at the render resolution, lower than the target resolution, depth buffer data, motion vectors, and color data. Then FSR 2.0 combines this information with a feedback loop of the previous output buffer. These are the previously rendered frames that makes this a temporal solution, and then out comes an upscaled image at the target resolution. If we flick back to NVIDIA's explanation of how DLSS works, you'll see that this is a very similar process. On the left, we have the rendered image and motion vectors as inputs, as well as a temporal feedback loop of past frame data. The addition DLSS has that FSR 2.0 doesn't have is this AI network comparison, which assists the DLSS algorithm in making decisions about how to upscale and handle temporal data. FSR 2.0 is also making decisions about how to upscale, confined within this red square in their flowchart. However, it's not a machine learning system doing this. AMD explained in more detail why they chose not to use machine learning for FSR 2.0. Basically, it comes down to being able to provide broader platform support, and AMD also says their analytical approach can potentially provide more control and a better ability for optimization. AMD also claims that ML-based upscalers use the model learned solely to decide how to combine previous history samples to generate the upscaled image. There is typically no actual generation of new features from recognizing shapes or objects in the scene. Based on understanding of how DLSS 2.0 works, this is accurate. NVIDIA has previously told us that the AI aspect of DLSS is mostly about making decisions on how to combine all the data inputs to the DLSS algorithm. But ultimately, everything AMD is saying here about their decision to not use machine learning is just bold talk at the moment. The end result is really what matters, and so far the comparisons between FSR 2.0 and DLSS have been quite limited. Soon we'll have to throw Intel's XESS into the mix as well, which is also an AI-based temporal upscaling solution. AMD might have been able to create an algorithm that works as well as AI-enhanced technologies and better than existing temporal upscaling, but it's far too early to make that call, even if it looks promising in samples. Like other temporal upscaling solutions, FSR 2.0 requires game developer integration. This is not something that you'll be able to enable in the GPU driver, like Radeon Super Resolutions, implementation of FSR 1.0. If FSR 2.0 doesn't have access to prior frames and motion vectors, it won't work, and those elements need to be provided within the game itself. FSR 2.0 should be slotted into the render pipeline before upscaling the HUD and between post-processing paths, depending on whether those post-process effects require anti-aliased images or depth buffers or so on. 
AMD has also provided estimates on how long it should take for developers to integrate, and they are claiming that integration should be the easiest and quickest in games that already support DLSS 2.0 or newer. It should also be easy for developers using Unreal Engine to integrate FSR 2.0 as AMD are providing a plugin. The most difficult implementations will be games that don't support the basic requirements of temporal upscaling yet, like decoupled render and output resolutions, or motion vectors. Now let's move on to the quality modes FSR 2.0 will be offering. This is a very similar set of quality settings as DLSS, with quality, balanced, performance, and ultra performance modes. If you're already familiar with what these do, FSR 2.0 will be the same. You can also think of this like FSR 1.0 quality settings, but with the ultra quality mode removed. The highest mode, quality, will upscale at a factor of 1.5x, so this is taking a 1440p image and upscaling to 4K as an example. The performance mode uses a 2x factor, so upscaling 1080p to 4K, and then the optional ultra performance mode uses a 3x factor, taking 720p up to 4K. Nvidia has previously advertised their ultra performance mode is suitable for 8K gaming, so this mode isn't going to be useful for most gamers that would probably top out at using the performance mode or even higher settings. It's also good to hear that AMD is encouraging developers to provide optional configurable ARCAS sharpening as a sharpness slider. Throughout a lot of testing of upscaling and sharpening technologies, I've found that the amount of sharpening required really varies depending on the game and your playing situation, things like display size and resolution. You might also have a personal preference of how sharp you want the image to be. I hope most developers implementing FSR 2.0 do opt for the sharpening slider for this very reason. If you are wondering what hardware will be required to run FSR 2.0, there is really good news to share here as AMD has confirmed support for hardware as far back as AMD's own Polaris series and Nvidia's Pascal series. This table shows the optimal starting level hardware for FSR 2.0 support, and you'll see in the 1080p section that AMD has listed the Radeon RX 590 and GeForce GTX 1070. Other sections in the table show support for the Radeon RX Vega series, GTX 16 series, and of course newer cards from AMD RDNA and RDNA 2, as well as Nvidia Turing and Ampere. While this table does only list the RX 590 and GTX 1070 as minimum hardware, there should be no reason why lower tier cards like the RX 580 and GTX 1060 couldn't also use FSR 2.0. Essentially, the way FSR 2.0 is processing images does not require specific instruction sets that aren't supported on these older architectures. The only reason why a GTX 1060 isn't included here is more that it may not be fast enough to benefit much from the technology. AMD says that FSR 2.0 is more demanding than FSR 1.0, but also that there are no constraints on supported hardware, and that gamers may have a good upscaling experience even with slower or older hardware than listed. This is huge news for gamers using all sorts of hardware. Obviously we have DLSS, which is only supported on NVIDIA GPUs with tensor cores, ruling out the GeForce 16 series and Pascal GPUs, as well as all competition GPUs. FSR 2.0 should work on those GPUs. We also know that Intel's XCSS will have two pathways, XMX instructions for Intel Arc GPUs and DP4A instructions for other GPUs. DP4A is supported on a lot of GPU architectures, including NVIDIA Pascal, but isn't supported on AMD Polaris as an example. This means FSR 2.0 should have broader platform compatibility than XCSS. With broad platform support, FSR 2.0 will also work on other platforms. AMD has confirmed support for FSR 2.0 on Xbox, and that it will be available in the Xbox GDK. You should also expect Steam Deck support, as Steam Deck is based on RDNA 2. AMD hasn't mentioned whether FSR 2.0 will work on the PlayStation 5, but there's no reason why it wouldn't given the abundance of TAA and upscaling solutions used in PS5 games. It's just rare for companies to talk about PS5 development tools in public. As for performance expectations, AMD provided a table showing the performance cost in a range of quality settings, target resolutions, and GPU classes. Generally, AMD are expecting FSR 2.0 to process out in under 1 millisecond, especially at resolutions below 4K, which is a reasonable performance cost for this sort of feature. That's similar to what we've seen from DLSS in the past, although comparisons are always difficult there as DLSS performance does vary from game to game. More information on performance will of course have to wait until we see the technology in action.
Lastly, in this video I wanted to touch briefly on motion performance. In our previous FSR 2.0 video, we weren't able to show any footage of FSR 2.0 in motion, as we weren't provided any ahead of time, but today of course, you can view some samples from Deathloop over on AMD's channel. The way AMD has compared it does make it somewhat difficult to see how FSR 2.0 handles motion, but at the same time the FSR 2.0 side of the screen seems to be relatively clear of artifacts that often plague temporal upscaling, like ghosting. However, that's not a confirmation that FSR 2.0 will handle all games well in motion. One of the major issues that we've seen with DLSS over the years is that sometimes game developers don't properly provide the necessary motion vectors into the DLSS algorithm, or place post-process effects in the wrong spot in the pipeline. This can create ghosting in some games where otherwise it wouldn't in others. New iterations of DLSS, like DLSS 2.3, attempted to combat this issue to decent success. It didn't fully eliminate ghosting, but in areas where it was very obvious, it was minimized. It's unclear how FSR 2.0 would handle these situations. You'd hope that AMD has some sort of algorithm within FSR 2.0 that is designed to handle these cases where developers don't quite get it right. Overall though, I think the additional information that AMD has provided on FSR is quite promising for the technology and the gaming industry overall. The big news that I wanted to hear was that FSR 2.0 would work on older GPUs, particularly things like the GTX 1060 and RX 580, as they could benefit the most from FSR 2.0 at resolutions like 1080p, where FSR 1.0 quality isn't very good. That's now been confirmed along with the quality settings we're getting and further information on how the algorithm works. What remains to be seen now is just how FSR 2.0 performs in image quality and FPS performance in general. FSR 2.0 should be available in the first game starting Q2 2022 and so far we know about Deathloop and now Forspoken as well. It'll be interesting to see what the uptake is like among developers and how many games already using DLSS and or FSR will integrate FSR 2.0 as well. On top of this, we're expecting to see Intel's XESS in games soon, so it's looking like a busy year for evaluating various image upscaling technologies from the big three hardware vendors. Certainly lots of videos that I'll be making. Anyway, that's it for this brief update on FSR 2.0 and the announcements that AMD has made at GDC 2022. If you're interested in supporting the channel and our hardware analysis and news updates like this, please do consider subscribing and also supporting us directly through our Patreon and Floatplane accounts, links to those in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.